Tonight, David Muir reporting. We take you inside two cases, a mother just 19 years old. She was trying to protect her daughter. She fought like hell. Another case in the beloved teacher, her whole future ahead of her. Mysterious cold cases. It gives you chills even today. Yes. What links both of those cases is the cutting edge forensic technology inside this lab. It sounded like science fiction at the time. Can they be solved? You'll see it unfold right here as they unmask the killer in both cases. Catching the killers on tonight's 2020 The Code Breakers. Tonight we take you inside two cases. Two young women both brutally murdered in their homes. The killers in each case evading police for decades. In one case, a mother just 19 years old, she was engaged to be married. Her fiance, who was about to marry her, adopt her daughter, he gets home and he immediately notices something is wrong. There's blood smeared on the stairway. The killer had attacked her in the bedroom. There was handprints of her trying to hold the door closed and she just wasn't strong enough. Another case in Texas, a beloved teacher, her whole future ahead of her. Drove in to Memphis. She just started a new school. She was loving teaching her students. She was in a very good place. Now, what was your emergency? <laughs> What's going on? Oh, what, did, what did your daughter do? She's been murdered! You remember walking in and what you discovered? I remember walking into the bathroom and seeing her body on the floor. She'd been handcuffed. That's correct. She had been handcuffed with her hands behind her back. There were about 36 different wounds on her body. She put up a fight. Of course, the question, who would want to kill each of these women, the mystery behind their murders, would torment their loved ones for decades. They've got handprints, they've got footprints. Why are they not finding this person? It was like the talk of the town forever. And for the detectives who were working these cases, frustrating dead ends. There was also a suspicion, could it have been a member of law enforcement? Right, there was no forced entry, so our speculation was that it was somebody that she knew or somebody that presented a position of authority that could have garnered that trust to get inside the apartment. All of these questions lasted for years and years. Yes. Yes. Both of these brutal murders were cold cases for decades. And what links both of those cases all of these years later is the cutting edge forensic technology inside this lab. Tonight, you'll see it unfold right here as they unmask the killer in both cases. It's the first week of December 1988. 19-year-old Kathy Swartz is home with her nine-month-old daughter. In Kathy's living room, a tree decorated and ready for the first Christmas for her little baby. She was living with Mike Warner. They were, you know, setting up their life, although he wasn't the father of the child. They were a couple and they were trying to make their way. He definitely came in and kind of was her knight in shiny armor. They were a, a happy little family. Mike got up around 5.30 uh, in the morning for his job. He gets home at 3.30, and he immediately notices something is wrong. Things were in disarray. Blood up the banister. And then in the bedroom was Kathy, very bloody, unclothed mostly. He would later describe it, it was like the walls were painted with blood. Mike is so distressed, he immediately runs to a neighboring apartment because he can't bring himself to call the police. Mike does go back into the apartment to find her daughter. Kathy's baby, who's nine months old, dressed in pants, a shirt. She has one sock on. Her diaper looks like it's been recently changed. She was standing up in the crib when Mike walked in. This is that baby left standing alone in that crib all those years ago. She's now 36 years old. How was your mother described to you? Beautiful, happy-go-lucky. She did love like ACDC, Metallica. She was like a little rock and roll girl. And everybody tells me that I was like her whole world. 
So you were 16 years old when you read the police report? Mm-hmm. It was awful for somebody to do what they did to her, knowing I was in the crib right next door. I just couldn't believe that somebody could do that. So detectives had questioned at the time whether or not this suspect had changed the diaper. Yeah. When the police got there unseen, um, I was dry. I didn't have a dirty diaper on. And it was some hours I was alone. So one of the first things that investigators notice is that there doesn't seem to be any sign of forced entry, which again suggests that she knew the person who came in and killed her. She was very good about locking her doors. I would call her and I would say, hey, I'm going to come over. And I would go to her door. It was locked and I would knock and she would, you know, who is it? And then she would let me in. We theorized that the assault started in the kitchen because in the kitchen there was passive blood drops on the floor. And then the smearing goes up the stairway to the upstairs bedroom. There are defensive wounds found on her hands. Her throat has been cut in multiple places. She's been strangled. She fought like hell. She was trying to protect her daughter, and, and she did. And the idea that this happened and you were just a couple of feet away. Yeah. Makes me mad that I wasn't old enough to help her. I'm 100% convinced she was trying to save her baby. Because I feel like she would have just ran outside and yelled, but I was upstairs and she wasn't gonna leave that apartment without me. In the bedroom where Kathy was found is a phone on the bed. Uh, the phone cord was cut, but on the phone there was Kathy's fingerprints and then there was also an unknown fingerprint in blood. In 88, obviously, DNA was in its infancy. The fingerprint on the phone, how significant? Very significant, because they were in actual blood, and it was not my mom's. There is a bloody footprint in the bathroom. It looks like the suspect took a shower after the murder to try to maybe wipe the blood off, clean up. But in the process of doing so, he left behind a left footprint, size 9, in blood. And then the person left without being seen and without being discovered. It was very unsettling that something like that could happen. It just didn't make any sense. None of it made any sense. But when crime scene investigators pass through that gruesome scene again, this time with a new forensic light source, they find a new clue and one that was imperceptible to the naked eye. It was like a great big neon clue. It's like, holy smokes. 